Hello everyone, welcome aboard Submarine Bakuna here at Independent Seaport Museum in Philadelphia. My name is Greg. Have you ever wondered why ships and submarines use red lights, particularly at night? Well today on SubScience, we're going to discuss some of the reasons why. It's time to rig for red. The use of red light aboard ships started sometime around World War II. Scientists were trying to find a lighting that would allow sailors to read charts and maps while still preserving their night vision. It was noted that the rods in our eyes that allow us to see during low light conditions were not as affected by the longer wavelengths of red light. This meant that a sailor could go from the interior of a ship lit with red light out onto the dark deck at night and have to wait a shorter period of time for his eyes to adjust when compared to walking out of a ship that was lit with white light. This meant that he could be more efficient and effective in performing his assigned duties. Bakuna's crew would have typically rigged for red under two conditions. The first is nighttime operations. It is important to remember that as a diesel electric submarine, Bakuna would have spent most of her time on the surface, diving only to run away from a threat or make an attack against the target. Submarines designed today are designed so that they can remain underwater in near perpetuity, with only the food on board being the limiting factor. Bakuna and other submarines like her had to surface to replenish the fresh air in the boat, as well as run their engines and charge batteries. Bakuna was also faster on the surface, reaching a top speed of around 20 knots, while submerged, she could only reach a max speed of around 9. The cover of darkness offered at night allowed Bakuna to surface and utilize that speed to make up for ground lost while running submerged during the day. After her guppy conversion, Bakuna's submerged speed jumped to a max of 15 knots, bringing it closer to her surface speed. However, traveling underwater that fast would burn through her batteries in about 30 minutes, meaning it was still important for her to travel on the surface as often as possible. Her sailors would take their watch stations here on the bridge. Stepping out from a red-lit boat meant they didn't have to wait as long for their eyes to adjust to the darkness of night. The Kuna's crew would also have rigged for red when going to general quarters and manning their battle stations. You may have noticed while watching these videos that there's no windows on the submarine, meaning no natural light can come in. If we took a depth charge hit and lost power, the interior of the boat would be plunged into perfect darkness. Having the boat preemptively red-lit means that again, Sailors would have to wait a shorter period of time for their eyes to adjust to that darkness, an important factor when the difference between life and death can be spelled out by a few seconds of hesitation. The one compartment on the boat that was always red lit is the crew berthing space in the after battery. Because red light isn't as hard on the eyes as white light, it allowed for sailors in their bunks to sleep while still providing enough light to see by for those moving through the space as they went about their duties. Because Bakuna's crew didn't sleep all at the same time, the compartment was continuously red lit as watches rotated through. Now we've come to our experiment, and this one's real easy. All you'll need to do this at home is a source of white light, a source of red light, and a stopwatch. Go into a darkened room, preferably without windows, but if you can't manage that, try a closet or just make sure your blinds are pulled tight. Turn on your white light and give your eyes time to settle. Then turn the light off. As soon as the light goes off, start your stopwatch and time how long it takes for your eyes to adjust. You should be able to navigate reliably in the darkness. Once you've done that, check your time and then repeat with the red light. Again, giving your eyes time to adjust before turning the light off. If you've done it correctly, you should notice the time that it took your eyes to adjust after the red light was turned off is shorter than the time it took for your eyes to adjust after the white light was turned off. Well, that does it for this episode of SubScience. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by liking and sharing it. Then head down to the comment section and leave us suggestions on topics you'd like to see us cover in future videos. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.